I'm going to dig into AMC today. This is one of the many meme stocks that has been in the headlines lately. And we've had quite a, quite a rally over the past six months to a year uh, that came out of the blue. At least it did if you're not in the know. Uh, we're expecting to see a rally shape up that could take us to $96 and then $122 all the way over to $164. And that $164 level is just a standard Fibonacci extension based on the history that we've had with this uh, security. It could easily exceed that target. So we're going to look into the wave structure, how it's shaped up, just to give us an idea of where these numbers are coming from and what our market context is at the moment. I have a, what I'm displaying here is of course the two hour view of AMC. And I'm actually gonna go back a little further in history. Back in the old days when AMC wasn't doing much, it was essentially left for dead, especially with the pandemic lockdowns and the shutdowns of movie theaters nationwide. And then suddenly out of the blue, Earlier this year, we had, a, we had an explosive rally that took us from under $2 all the way up to about $26 or so, 26 19 don't know the exact peak. So you had a parabolic rally, it went sky high, and then we had a pretty colossal crash right back. We didn't quite end up back down where we were originally, but it was more than a 78.6% retrace for what I'm calling the wave two. So as we work our Elliott wave structure into this, you always start with the wave one, two combination. And that's what we have here. We have a wave one, that's the blow off rally and a very clear pullback for wave two. We know it's a wave two for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have a higher low. And number two, the shape of the correction is a corrective shape. It's a clear structure that's not impulsive, it's messy. It looks like A, B, C with a B wave bounce and a final C wave to finish, the, finish this thing off. So when we put our Fibonacci retrace tool on here, we got a couple of targets. So just as always, we look for peaks and significant points that, are, uh, that fit our Fibonacci sequence that we want to look for. Subwave one should hit the 0.38% extension and subwave three should hit the 1.0. And then our wave three should hit the 1.38. So when we look at this thing, we clearly have a rally, not particularly explosive, and it's probably just likely uh, shifted the sentiment a bit. People probably got very discouraged when they saw the rally fall kind of short. But we hit the 0.382 extension way back in March, got followed by a relatively shallow wave two. It looks shallow here just because of the zoom and the scale, but really the wave two is almost perfect. It hit little bit lower than a 0.236, which is expected. From there, our next target would be the 1.0 extension. So if we look closely at this thing, I'm gonna zoom up a little bit more, just the target, just to give us a better view. The 1.0 would be about $29. And uh, we actually exceeded the 1.0 extension here. As a matter of fact, we hit about, what, the one point, let's see, actually, as a matter of fact, we did hit the 1.0. We exceeded just a bit. So if you look closely, for, uh, there's a little peak right here. It's about 29.5. So we had a quick swift pullback and then a counter rally that took us to the top of the bigger third wave. The bigger third wave is going to be in your uh, 1.38 range. And based on our overall fib structure, we came up just a smidge short. Uh, we did exceed the 1.236 extension. But we're calling that the wave three for now. And then we had the final blow off top. It's a breathtaking rally that took us all the way up to about $73. This is an example of a fifth wave extension in which we actually exceeded our standard Fibonacci target. Based on the fact that our wave, our subwave one hit the 0.382 extension, we would expect the ultimate top for this larger structure to hit the, uh, the 1.764 extension but we actually went beyond the 2.618 extension. So that's a colossal rally. It's an indication of FOMO. It's driven by emotion. It's the collective limbic response of the market participants. People that are in the know will tell you it's a classic short squeeze. Whatever you want to call it, it's a fifth wave extension. And this is a very good sign for subsequent, subsequent rallies we may see 
in the near future. After this blow off top, we've had a pretty good pullback, not at all unexpected for a parabolic blow off rally like what we saw here, especially after the triplet extension. I'm calling this pullback down here the A wave down to about 38.24. We had a counter rally back up to $65 ish. I'm going to call that the top of the B wave. And then we had a final C wave pull all the way back to uh, right around $29 pretty recently. So that's the structure. What are we expecting next? Well, next thing is uh, we're looking at this entire thing as a wave one, two structure. Provided that this wave two bottom holds, here's what we're looking at here. Our first wave, our first sub wave, of course, should hit somewhere between the 0.382 and the 0.618 section. That puts us right between $54 and 70, 73. So we need to see a clear five wave structure lead us right in this purple box. Once that happens, we really would like to see a three wave correction in a wave two. Where that wave two ends up depends on how high we go. Uh, it could pull back to the 0.382 extension if we, if we get to the 0.618. Otherwise, it, it may go lower. As long as it's a three wave correction and we see a micro five wave structure up, we're going to be golden. I'll be touching on this in a second, how to play this. The next target from there would be the $96 I referred to earlier. In this case, it's showing a 96.50. Should have a long, slow consolidation wave four, followed by uh, another target at $122 eventually making its way all the way up to that lofty $163, $164 target. So again, the exciting thing here is crazy extensions are not unprecedented. That's what we've been seeing here. If you uh, look at the history, fifth wave extensions are pretty common. It would not surprise me to see, you know, micro fifth wave extension in the third wave may blow right past the 1.0. We might see a lot of interesting things going on. You might see a lot of those antenna-like structures form We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's focus on the near term. So how are you gonna play this? If you're buying AMC straight, there have been a few good buying opportunities. The first buy is typically made in the third wave down of a larger C wave. So looking at this after the fact, I would call this the third wave of the C wave. The C wave is a five wave structure, so you can call this a one, two, three, four, five. This to start accumulating a position, maybe your first of three tranches. The next tranche, you would buy at the actual bottom of the C wave. This is looking like this is, this is gonna be the bottom, provided that it holds. Again, we can't take anything for granted. Good place to load up on non-leverage positions. The final tranche, three of three, would ideally be purchased after we complete a one, two rally correction. You can uh, either buy it right where you believe the wave two is, or you can wait for a micro five up to buy your final trench. And if you've missed a few buying opportunities, there's no reason to rush or panic. You can still wait for this whole thing to develop. Honestly, you could buy a little now. It's not, we're not that far up above the bottom so far. So again, just a three, three tranche strategy, pretty typical. Depends on how it plays out. As for leverage positions, if you're using call options or if you're borrowing using old-fashioned old leverage, you don't want to buy here, very risky. We want to see a full one-two combination happen first. Uh, in this case, you have a couple of opportunities to buy. If you're aggressive, you'd buy right when you think the two-wave has bottomed. You'd buy that and you would target either the, uh, the micro third wave or the bigger third wave we saw here. Depends on your timeline. Buy enough theta, can't emphasize that enough. You blow yourself up very easily if you don't. Uh, the safer option would be to wait for a five wave structure to complete. So uh, maybe you have hit around $57 after that bottom. Again, we don't know the exact numbers yet. We'll watch this play out. The safest place to buy a call option would be once you exceed your, your wave one high. And this rule applies for any long position, whether it's leveraged or not. The safest place to do this is once you have a bottom confirmed, and that happens once you have your one, two, and your price rallies past the top of the initial wave one. That is the safest, most conservative way to play this. Why do we emphasize buying on the buying leverage options, call options on the wave two pullback? Well, if you bought back here, that's a lot of theta decay. Wave twos are sharp. You may be able to get the same return, if not better, if you just wait to buy here. And you can do that with a lot less risk. 
So uh, again, we'll wait for this one two to develop before we dig into the actual trades to make here. But uh, we got a pretty bullish outlook here. Let's watch this thing develop. I can't rule out a lower low. We're gonna keep watching this. The structure we have right now isn't showing too much definition at the micro level. If I zoom up a little bit, you could make out a, maybe that's a one, two, maybe a three is forming. It's a little early to tell, but let's keep an eye on this. Again, if you're accumulating leveraged positions, or I'm sorry, non-leveraged, buy a couple tranches over time spaced out. Leverage options don't touch yet. I'm gonna wait for that. I might actually make a play on that. Uh, other than that, happy trading. Thank you.